In this case, we're going to be using Dyad Flow as a sealant material. And just about every dentist that I talk to has switched from using sealant material for sealants to flowable composite uh, years ago. And so this is a pretty natural use for the Dyad Flow to be able to use it as a sealant. And you can see I'm using a small round burr here. This is just a personal choice to use a quarter round burr to clean out these grooves. Uh, you can use air abrasion, a small burr. If you're just going to use pumice, make sure it's a non-fluoridated pumice so it doesn't interfere with the bonding protocol. But whatever you want to do to clean out these grooves is fine. I just find that by opening them up I'm going to get a little bigger bulk of the diet flow going down into these grooves. But we're also going to have some uncut enamel that's not touched in those grooves when the, the quarter round burr goes to the depths of those grooves. So we're going to use an acid etch here and you're going to see that this is going to be the one time that we are going to etch when using the diad flow. And that's going to be when we need the diad flow to bond to some uncut enamel. So anytime the enamel is cut or any time we have exposed dentin. The dyad flow, because of its self-adhering properties, will bond directly to those different two structures. But when we have uncut enamel, we're gonna go ahead and place a phosphoric acid and leave it in place for 15 seconds on the uncut enamel and then rinse it all off. So the etch is getting down into the grooves as well, but more importantly, it's getting on the adjacent uncut enamel and it's gonna provide the highest bond strength for us so that we know everything's gonna stay in place once we've cured it into place. And again, using the enclosed tip, I've got the shade A2 Dyad Flow and I'm squirting it into that first sealant. And then you're just using the brush to kind of take off the excess. And that's important because as you know, whether you're doing the sealants or one of your assistants is doing the sealants, one of the rookie mistakes is to leave them way too high in occlusion because you forgot that you're not doing a real restoration per se. You're just filling up those grooves and you don't need it to extend onto the occlusal surface. So in addition to agitating the dyad flow into the tooth structure for 15 to 20 seconds, the brush is really helping me remove all the excess that you may have and you may have to adjust off later. And that's definitely one of the things that I've noticed when I've taught my assistants to do sealants, one of the mistakes that they make. Because this is a shade A2, we're going to cure this for 20 seconds here with the curing light and then we're done. I mean, you really look at the thickness of this layer and it's about half a millimeter down into the groove where I use that quarter round burr. So we're going to cure this for 20 seconds and that sealant is going to be completely cured. It's going to be done. Now you might ask, well, why didn't you do all three of these sealants at the same time? And that's actually a really good question. And the reason is we've got some pretty powerful lights that we've set up next to the patient here because we're filming this for you to watch. And my concern was that the dyad flow might actually set before I had a chance to go in with the brush and fit it out. And if we did not have these powerful filming lights shining at the patient, or if you took your overhead operatory light and just turned it away from the patient, you can certainly save a lot of time by going in and taking the dyad flow and placing it into all three of these teeth so that we're doing sealants on them at the same time and then going through with the brush and thinning all three of them out and then curing them in succession. And that would actually make a lot of sense and make this procedure a lot more efficient. But because of the high powered lights we've got and uh, I'm doing these teeth individually, Usually, which is fine. You can choose to do them that way yourself if you're not in a hurry. The principles remain the same. Again, place the dyad flow with the enclosed tip into the preparation. You can see that I've placed a little more than I need on that molar, for example, and that's fine because I know I'm going to be brushing it away. If you tried to put the exact right amount once you went in with the brush and thinned it out and smeared it against all the tooth surfaces, you may end up having to go in and place a second application of the diet flow. So there's no penalty to be paid for placing a little bit extra in, as you saw me do right there, and then use the enclosed brush to agitate it into the two structure and to remove any excess. As well, you know, you might smear a little bit of the dyad flow up onto some of the cuspal inclines, but as we go in and polish, that's going to come right off because the dyad flow only sticks to the uncut enamel where we've acid etched it and it won't stick anywhere else. So we've got our 20 second cure on this last sealant to make sure everything is okay. Again, this is a dull 7408 bird just being run over the groove. This is being used once more to make sure that we don't have any rough areas for the patient's tongue. 
where the sealant and the tooth come together. The tip of that burr is big enough where it can't even reach down into the grooves uh, anywhere where I was with the quarter round burr. So you really don't have to worry about removing too much of the sealant material when using that 7408 burr. Then have the patient bite together and check the occlusion and we should only see it on the cuss tips and the marginal ridges and that's where we see it. So we're going to go straight to the polish and this is the Oclu brush that I'm using. Again, no need for polishing paste with this. It's got the polishing material built into the bristles and also it does a really good job of removing any adjacent dyad flow that might be on some uncut enamel that wasn't etched. And so we'll go in and dry it off and take a final look at that. And again, that's a pretty compelling case for the shade A2 of the dyad flow to be kind of the universal shade. And you may want to pick it. It just simply disappears into the tooth as you look from the before to the after. What an easy way to do sealants.